I'm Will George, and today we're out near Salem on a nice little spread of land that uh, is quite interesting, owned by Elizabeth Warren Griffin. Hi, thanks for coming. Thanks. Hey, this is really an interesting little piece here. It looks like, uh, kind of like a, a wind turbine. Is that what it is? Yes, it is. This is our wind tower or wind turbine, affectionately known as Windy Boy. And we're pretty proud and looking forward to sharing some information about it with you. Great. So, what exactly is this wind unit? Uh, how does it, well, what is this, how does the wind unit work? Well, there's sev several different types of installations that can happen with a wind turbine. You can have a fixed pole, or you can have a pole that can be lowered. And for ease of servicing and maintenance, we decided to go with the system that allows for the lowering. Um, so we have a base pole, which is called a gin pole, which um, acts as a support as it's being lowered. And it's lowered just by a, a hand crank. And they can lower it all the way to the ground and do whatever servicing or maintenance needs to happen. And then raise it back up. How tall is it? 106 feet. Do you ever have any issues with lightning? We did. Um, not a direct hit. It was, uh, they're not exactly sure what happened, but it was affected by lightning about a year ago. So that required um, sending the alternator in to be rewound. Um, and after that, we installed a series of units that are like surge protectors so that it won't happen again. How often do you have days when there's no wind? <laughs> um, usually not, not very many, many in actually. the winter, especially. Yeah, actually most days it blows some. I think it's, it's rare to have a day where we look at uh, a Winnie boy and nothing's been generated. What's the uh, least amount of wind that it takes to turn that thing? Well, it can turn at very small amounts of wind, but it won't generate until down to, um, it takes at least six miles per hour. Uh, to generate electricity. And it goes through a startup process. So the wind has to be high enough for at least a few minutes for it to go through its startup process. It makes me think of, you know, when you're going online, when you've seen those movies and they're going online at some power station and there's this whole process of starting up and the lights come on on the inverter and flick in a certain order and then once it's been going for a minute or two, then it's actually online generating. What's so unique about this meter? Actually nothing. This is the same meter you have in anybody's house. Um, and this is where PG comes every month and takes a reading and they, and they send us a bill. The, it has two, two different displays for it. Um, the first is our usage, how much we've used on a monthly basis. Um, and then it also displays how much has gone back into the grid, back into the system. This number right here is the total number of kilowatts that we have used in the house since electricity came on. And this number is the total number of kilowatts that have gone back into the, the grid. And when PGE figures our bill, they give us a credit for the amount that we've put back into the system. All right, let's go on side to take a look at the uh, inverters. Okay. All right. All right. Could you tell us um, what these things are, just kind of basically describe them, how they work, and what they do? These are the inverters, and they take the DC current generated by the solar panel in the wind turbine and convert it to AC power, which is what we use in our home. Uh, this is the um, inverter for the solar system, and this is the inverter for the wind system. The energy is generated um, at the site out there um, at the units, and they come into the house in a conduit um, as direct current. Uh, they come in through this wire as a DC, they're converted into AC uh, within these units and they exit as AC here and here. Uh, they then they go to our panel right there, which is the panel you'd have in anybody's normal house. When we need to use energy for our needs, it's used right there at that point, just as in anybody's house. What we're not using at that point keeps on going out to the, to the meter um, and it goes back out into the grid uh, to be used uh, by somebody else. But when we're uh, using uh, electricity, we have a washing machine on and our dryer and our heater all at the same time, of course, we're drawing energy. It comes in from the outside, in through our panel, and out to our appliances. Um, 
this unit up here um, is where excess energy goes um, if it's blowing so hard outside that the amount of DC current coming in is overwhelming Winnie Boy's ability to, to convert to AC. Um, the energy is then shunted up there and it becomes heat. So we are in a situation here where if, if the grid goes down that services our home, we are down as well, even if it's windy, even if right. it's sunny. Um, because there is, these are, these are powered electrically and the conversion process is electric. And so, um, the trade-off for being on the grid is that we do go down if the grid goes down. Right. But the benefit is we can get by without having to use batteries. Right. Which you felt was a very environmentally unfriendly option. It only produces within a certain range of voltages. Um, when there's no wind or very little wind, less than six miles per hour, it can generate the voltage up to, um, I think it's 160, to where this begins to actually generate electricity. Mm -hmm. And if it's blowing too fast, which is very, very rare, uh, the voltage coming in becomes more than 360, and this thing protects itself, and it sends a signal up to Winnie Boy to feather itself and stop producing. Um, on that very, very windy day we had a few weeks ago, um, when all the, all, the, all the trees came down and the power went out, um, I was watching this go and it would generate for 10 minutes and then be offline for 5 minutes and 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off as the gusts would kick it above the, the ability to, to generate safely. Right. There's a display here that tells you um, if you hit it, it comes on uh, and you can see uh, your usage you've done um, in a 24 hour period or at least from when this has turned on to when it turned off. Keep track of your daily usage. It cycles through another display where it shows you your yearly usage, uh, so you keep track of how many kilowatts you've uh, generated per year. And as far as uh, um, Windy Boy, it looks kind of dead today. What's going on? No wind. Uh, that's no wind right now. At the moment. Um, and that's part of, the, part of the issue with having um, a wind system. Some days we have great wind and it's generating uh, 20, 30 kilowatts a day, and in some days uh, we'll get very little. So describe what it was like when you, when you had these first hooked up. Oh, we were all in here together all, as a whole family, and we came home from, uh, uh, from work, and we all gathered around to watch Sunny Windy Boy uh, start generating. And there was no wind that day. No wind the first day. <laughs> so. so how long did you stare at Windy Boy? <laughs> all day. <laughs> please, please. But it is nice in the wintertime when it's really stormy and it's really freezing outside and nothing's happening with Sunny Boy uh, to watch Windy Boy just, uh, just crank it away. Right. Um, just you can give me round about ballpark figures. Um, how much did the total thing cost about? Um, buying the equipment mm -hmm. and installing the equipment was about $25,000. And over the course of the payback, um, which is over five years for the wind, we'll get about uh, it's a little over half, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A little over half gets back directly from grants from Energy Trust. Plus, we have ongoing tax credits that we get from the state. Without the uh, Energy Trust and the tax credits, it could be probably like 45, 50. No, the, no, the total cost is 25. Okay. Just right. what we laid out to get all this stuff, and we got. Um, not, not quite half of that's back. Right up front. Up front. Up front. And then over time through the tax credits and we submit quarterly report invoices to Energy Trust. And actually Energy Trust, uh, they came out and looked at the site and gave us a lot of advice because they want these things to work as well. They don't want to pay money up front and have it not work because one, it's a waste of money and two, it's a bad example. We had an interesting experience with the county because they had never been um, had a permit request for a residential oh, yeah. wind turbine. Um, and so they were supportive of it once they understood that we weren't trying to be our own little mini electric company. And as far as your personal philosophy, um, did you do this because you want to be green or is it because you want to make a difference for sustainability? I mean, what, what made you make that choice? We did it because both reasons you mentioned. Um, we want to have a small impact on the land and um, we wanted to make a difference in uh, you know, where we live and both and also set an example. We just felt like it was, it was a good thing to do. It was the right thing to do. We figured that the main reason why we want to do it is not so much to make money off making electricity, but a reducement of carbon we're using mm -hmm. while we live here. 
Well, I really appreciate you having us out here today to see your great uh, adventure in uh, pioneering of wind and solar energy. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Will George, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.